has a direct access, obviously, to the uh, sphenoid sinus and can be a source of lick as well uh, when we do transcranial approaches. And um, here we have performed an anterior clinoidectomy as well. We see the sphenoid sinus here and here. And then the third nerve, the fourth nerve, the sixth nerve in the cavernous sinus, and uh, the trigeminal nerve in V1, V2, and V3. So moving uh, on to what we see in surgery, it's a classical arterial approach view with the optic nerve, carotid artery, and this is this picture is centered on the, of the on the MCA. And we can also see here the third nerve, the basilar artery here, and uh, PCA, PCOM, and the carotid artery. So classical uh, surgical view. But if we move laterally uh, towards the approaches that we can, or what we can approach with the middle fossa uh, classic approach, which is its craniotomy centered here around the root of the zygoma, This is, a, um, this is an approach performed in a cadaver uh, of the classical middle fossa approach. Small craniotomy can be tailored demand, depending on if we want to also access the anterior part of Meckel's cave or we're going more posterior. But anyway, uh, the main reference once we open skin incision uh, is the uh, zygomatic root. And we have centered this craniotomy in the zygomatic root here. Uh, just to expose all this anatomy of the middle fossa that we know we saw in the lab that we can relate all this anatomy for amino valley here, uh, spinosum with the middle meningeal artery, GSPN. We can reference all this to the uh, zygomatic root and to the external acoustic canal. So we know that uh, approximately three millimeters posterior to the anterior part of the zygomatic root, we have uh, foramen ovale. A little posterior, we have spinosum. And about 17 millimeters to two centimeters posterior to that, we can find the posterior aspect of GSPN. And that's uh, been very useful in the OR, as well as the relative depth uh, as compared to the border of the craniotomy in which we can find all these superficial structures, including the arcuate eminence here. So in between two and three centimeters deep, we can find all these structures. And uh, we also look at, when we look at the middle foss approach, we can also uh, perform two additional variations of that approach that are, we can either access the internal acoustic canal and drill it uh, for acoustic neuroma, for, for vestibular schwannoma, for instance. Um, and we can also drill the anterior, uh, perform the anterior petrosectomy and access through the middle fossa, we can access the posterior fossa. And we saw in the lab also that the internal acoustic canal uh, usually projects towards the zygomatic root. So it's another, um, another point of reference that is very useful. So this is the classical view of a middle fossa approach where we see uh, V3, the trigeminal ganglion here. This is V2. This is the middle meningeal artery and GSPN, the arcuate eminence and uh, the ridge of the uh, petrous bone. So the petrous ridge where the superior petrosal sinus sits. So having these references with GSPN, the classical reference of the arcuate eminence, and bisecting that, we can find the IAC. And then we will look uh, and we take and open the dura, we can see seven and eight uh, very well. And we can put the endoscope and we see that a little bit better. We'll show a, a, another picture of that. But just to complete what we can access with the middle foss approach, we can perform an anterior petrosectomy in between the root, uh, the, the trigeminal nerve, GSPN. And below GSPN, we know that there's the um, uh, petroscarotid artery, the cochlea here, 
and the medial aspect of the IAC. So this can be safety drilled. And once we do that in the lab, so this is the IAC dura, we can expose all this anatomy. And by cutting this and the tentorium, we can, in the uh, supratentorial dura, we can see the fifth nerve all the way. And we can also put the endoscope and look around and so we see a lot more anatomy. This is seven and eight. This is the sixth cranial nerve, and this is the trigeminal nerve. And this is a, an endoscopic view of uh, seven and eight. So just to finish this uh, overview uh, lecture of the approaches, then we move on to the posterior cranial fossa. And then we can have, which is a relatively small area as compared to the rest of the cranium. Uh, in between the zygomatic root and the inion, we find the posterior fossa and the transverse and sigmoid sinus are going to be our references. And we can perform a transpetrosal approach, very often combined with uh, a supratentorial extension in a combined transpetrosal appro approach or also called posterior petrosectomy approach, supra and infratentorial. And then uh, the retrosigmoid classical approach. And so this is all the anatomy that we are going to, uh, to see and to know here. This is the transverse and sigmoid sinus and the jugular bulb. This is the labyrinth. And this is the asterion, a uh, very good reference of uh, the sigmoid sinus is the mastoid groove and the line that joins the mastoid groove towards the asterion. Uh, and uh, this is all the anatomy of the posterior fossa. Here the cerebellum has been uh, partially resected. And then we see seven and eight. We see the fifth cranial nerve and we see um, nine, 10, 11. This is a posterior view uh, of the posterior fossa content and the CP angle. This is again, the fifth cranial nerve, this is seven and eight. And on the left side, we can see it completely dissected with the labyrinth here. And um, this is nine, 10 and 11. And so when we combine the uh, transpetrosal approach uh, with the supratentorial extension, uh, we have to divide we have to ligate the superior petrosal sinus, and then we have to divide the tentorium. And we have to be very careful with the fourth nerve that runs in the tentorium here. And then, so that's the, uh, the combined approach that looks at the uh, CP angle structures uh, plus the middle fossa structures. And dividing the tentorium, we can ha have access from the third cranial nerve uh, and the posterior fossa contents. So when we look at um, this lateral uh, view of the, um, that's the right side. So we see the sigmoid sinus here, the transverse sinus and the jugular bulb. Uh, we see how we can perform a pre-sigmoid approach that uh, as I said before, we can combine with the middle fossa approach. So we have supra and infratentorial extension and then the retrosigmoid approach. We have to also, um, so in, in the posterior petrosal approaches or presigmoid approaches, we can um, also have all the variants, the retro labyrinthine approach that would be this one in which we um, preserve the labyrinth and hearing the translabyrinthine approach, uh, and then sometimes the transcochlear approach that so, uh, we'll see later. So when we uh, have an overview of the posterior and posterior lateral approaches, we have to talk about the um, far lateral approach that is a uh, craniotomy, the retrosigmoid craniotomy, uh, lower, uh, lower than the retrosigmoid craniotomy down to the foramen magnum. And then we usually combine that with the um, C1 laminectomy and with um, condylar drilling that with all its extensions, I'm not going to uh, 
uh, to detail uh, too much of that because uh, we're going to see that in uh, subsequent lectures. But here, uh, the important, uh, one of the most important aspects of this anatomy and this approach would be um, the uh, location of the vertebral artery that is uh, located on the, on the groove of uh, C1. And this is how the anatomy, this anatomy is very complex. This shows uh, in this anatomical specimen, this is the vertebral artery, and this is C1, uh, occipital C1 junction. And uh, here would, would be the craniotomy for a far lateral approach. And the area that we are going to combine and we are going to see includes also uh, this anatomy here, the um, upper part of the spinal cord and medullas, uh, as well as all the um, anatomy of the CP angle that uh, we saw before with all these structures that we are going to see. This is the fifth nerve, the sixth nerve, seven and eight, nine, 10 and 11. This is the 12th cranial nerve. So this is the area of uh, C1. And uh, we're going to see the vertebral arteries joining here uh, in the basilar artery and all this anatomy. So thank you very much for the invitation to talk in this symposium. It's really an honor for me. And um, of course, this is dedicated to Dr. Rotten, uh, who is, uh, was the greatest mentor and uh, most brilliant neurosurgeon and kindest human being that I've ever met. And um, he saved thousands of lives and I hope uh, we can carry on part of his legacy with this kind of symposiums and uh, with uh, our laboratories around the world. And I just want to acknowledge and uh, I'm very grateful to my fellows, my current fellows in the lab. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>